So, so this is a quick introduction, and we'll use this to describe precession in the class today. And uh, you're not really going to see this for the remainder of this class. The class that where this is really need, need, uh, necessary is physics 4B. Uh, in physics 4B, you cover magnetism. And there is no way to do magnetism well without understanding cross product. So you know, you'll see this again in physics 4B, especially if you take it with me. Um, but I just want to leave it there. Uh, for now, let's use this tool to describe what's going on here. Um, I, I think I can do it in five minutes or so. So let's first figure out the direction of torque. Not you know, clockwise or counterclockwise, but as an actual vector quantity. So, um, so torque due to gravitational force. Um, so you know, before, we were saying it's a counterclockwise, because that's the direction it seems to rotate. Now, let's actually use the definition of torque using the cross product. So um, what, as a vector, what direction does torque point in? Try it out. You know, take out your right hand, use the rule, and see which direction the torque, R cross F, goes. In? Into the board? Wait, into the board, really? Argo, oh, I see. Um, so all these vectors, uh, you have to imagine it as coming from the origin. So R is a vector coming from origin to the point where you're applying the force. Those of you who don't have your right hand out, I don't know how you're doing it. This is very difficult to work out in your head. That's why we have the right hand rule. So Ali, what direction is the torque? That's why, take out your right hand. That's the whole point of the right hand rule. Um, so you first take out your, you first orient to your right hand in the direction of the first vector. So the first vector is pointed to the left. So you first orient your hand in the leftward direction. Now that doesn't fix all the direction, it can be in different directions, right? So that's the second part of the right hand rule. You orient it in such a way that you can bend your fingers in the direction of the second vector downward. So what's the, direction, what's the orientation of the hand that lets you do that? Put your hand in that orientation. In a way, we are doing this three-dimensionally, so maybe your hand is in the entirely wrong direction. If it's coming out from you, that's not the direction of the first vector. Put it in the direction of the first vector. It should be pointed to your left, not directly outward. Right? So what's the direction of your thumb when you finally orient it so that you can bend your fingers in the direction of the second vector? Yeah, your thumb is pointing out of the board. And uh, you know, one thing I will tell you is that, so I'll move on after saying this. So right hand rule, it's p making a choice between two choices, either perpendicular coming one direction or perpendicular going the other way. So the thumb p is pick trying to pick between those two. It doesn't have to be precise. It's not trying to tell you, you know, is it like 60 degrees or uh, 30 degrees. It's just trying to pick, is it the one coming out of the board? Is it the one going into the board? So here, R cross P or R cross F it's coming out of the board. So the torque due to gravity, the torque due to gravity is coming out of the board. Okay. So um, that's the direction of the torque. That's the torque that we were a minute ago describing as counterclockwise. So what that means is somehow, when this is not rotating, when I simply release it and let go, the direction of the angular acceleration is uh, described by a vector that's pointing towards you. Or as I release it, the torque causes change in angular momentum, and the change in angular momentum is somehow consistent with the angular momentum pointing towards you. So suppose that you know, this, uh, this uh, hangs down a little bit, and let's say it's uh, swinging down this way. So it gains uh, some momentum going in this uh, direction. Um, the angular momentum that's associated with this momentum, do you agree that it's pointing towards you? 
right? Look at the definition of angular momentum, R cross P. So R cross P, so yeah, it's uh, angular momentum is pointing towards you. So this is the proper, um, fully featured way of describing things that rotate. You don't say clockwise or counterclockwise. That's uh, the physics version of baby talk. Um, so you know, until we cover this, you didn't have the mathematical tools for describing those rotational vector directions correctly. That's why we were saying clockwise and counterclockwise, the way children say wabbit. Um, so, but now that you know about cross product, you can now talk like an adult <laughs> and uh, actually describe direction of rotating things, not as clockwise and counterclockwise, but as being associated with a vector that's pointed in a particular way. So let's uh, try to figure out why when I, uh, so you know, so all of this is uh, intuitive if this is not rotating initially. Then when I let go, there's a direction of torque is pointing towards you. So direction of, um, uh, direction of angular momentum that develops is also pointing towards you. But I want to use this tool to describe why once I make this rotate first, then, so when I let go of this wheel, is the torque still pointing towards you? Torque. Does, did anything in the free body diagram change? Yeah, so torque is still pointing towards you. And the motion that you see, I want to be able to describe the motion that you are going to see as motion resulting from torque that's pointing towards you. Good, so let me describe the key difference between when the, the wheel is released from this position versus, or this state versus when it was already rotating. So in this state, what is the angular momentum of the wheel? Zero, it's not rotating, right? So starting from zero angular momentum, when the wheel begins to gain angular momentum, then it gains angular momentum in the direction of torque. All right, what if, if the wheel was already spinning? What is the direction of its angular momentum? Is it? So here you have to think through it a little bit. Uh, let's say angular momentum of, of this mass here. Okay, momentum of this mass is pointing away from you, right? That's momentum P. I need a R. What is the direction of R using this as your center of rotation? R goes kind of in that way, right? So let me do the right hand rule R cross P. Oh, that's the direction. So when this is rotating this way, the angular momentum points actually along the axis in this direction. And you know, if I was rotating the other way, then it would be pointing along the axis towards me. Yeah. So when I cause this wheel to rotate, when this wheel has an angular, when this wheel is rotating, so to put it the way I did, um, the top would have to be going away from you. That's the momentum at the top. Momentum at the bottom is coming towards you, then, um, so if these are the momentum that describes the rotation of the wheel, that the angular momentum of the wheel, this is the angular momentum of the wheel. Yeah? And what the torque does is, so, you know, I want you to picture this. Okay, so I have an angular momentum that's pointing that way. And when I let go, let allow net torque to act on it, then it um, slightly changes this direction, this way, right? So the, the angular momentum that used to, point, used to point in this direction, a moment later, it pointed in this direction. Is the change in angular momentum pointing towards you? Once again, I want you to think through this. So you are looking at two vectors. Vector that was pointing this way, and another vector. So this is, let's say, initial angular momentum, and the final angular momentum points this way. How is a change in the angular momentum represented? 
it's related to the angle, but if you had to point, uh, point out a vector and say this vector is the change in angular momentum, what would you call it? Where would you like draw it? So let me draw a picture here. So let me draw the top view. So the top view here would be from the top. Um, so you guys are all sitting here looking at the demo. And um, initial angular momentum pointed to the, um, to the left, right? And a later point, the angular momentum changes the direction so that it points in this direction. How would you illustrate the change in angular momentum? The change in angular momentum, L2 minus L1. How would you represent it here? Asia? No, not, I mean, I want to relate it to torque, but I want you guys to know how to figure out vector algebra. So this is a difference vector between the two, right? So once again, the question is, how is the difference represented here? What do you mean by arc length? Yeah, so you want to uh, uh, connect a, a vector this way. The vector that connects the tip of the two vectors, that's the vector that represents the difference. And this is how I figure it out. Essentially, this is a vector that when I add it to L1, I'm going to get L2. So it must be this vector. So that if I imagine adding it uh, you know, head to tail, then you know, L1 plus this delta L gives me L2, right? So the, the difference in the change in the angular momentum is pointing towards you. And looking at this here, this change in angular momentum should be parallel to torque. And yes, it is. The difference between when it didn't have initial angular momentum is that when it didn't have initial angular momentum, the torque continues to point towards you. But with the precession, as angular momentum changes, direction of torque changes also. So, um, so, you know, so the direction of a change of angular momentum changes to here, changes to here, so it eventually ends up drawing out a circle. Okay, I, uh, I think I'm have, um, I don't have quite enough time to do everything I want you to do with the precession. Let me wrap up here. Uh, let me have you guys make a prediction. So you have seen me do the precession a few times, right? Um, so let me actually make a measurement. I'm going to spin this as fast as I can and measure how long it takes to precess. So I'll count, ready, set, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004,005. About five seconds to make a full turnaround, right? That's the precession period or whatever. Um, how do you think a precession rate, precession period will change if I spin it slower? Will it precess faster or slower? So a lot of people say slower. It's because you have a messed up intuition. <laughs> it comes down to this. With the rotation, you don't actually have an intuition. The only way you can develop intuition is by using math to help you figure out what should be. So, but because this is the one place where a lot of people don't have good intuition, I want to demonstrate it. So let me spin it slower, and let's just see how the period changes. So I'm spinning it slower. Ah. Okay, spinning it slower. And let me just uh, let go and see. Ready, set, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. I didn't count any faster, right? Or slower. So yeah, so before it took five seconds, and now it takes four seconds. If you want, you guys can time me. You know, use the clock to time me. So let me do the fast one again, so that you can actually see that I'm not, you know, deliberately miscounting or anything. Let me just do this super fast again. Okay, um, count the seconds. Ready, set, go. And stop. How many seconds? Five, five seconds, okay. Now let me spin it slower and let's do it one more time. So this is a much slower spin. Um, ready, set, go. Stop. Three seconds, yeah. So when it's spinning slower, it precesses faster. 
And uh, normally, you know, I try to go through this, but that's the part I don't have time for. But I want to encourage you to figure it out. I gave you all the tools you need to figure it out. Um, it'll take time, so let me just leave that there. But um, so, you know, a lot of the things you have seen in this class should have been intuitive. As in, maybe you didn't know how to figure out the answer, but once you saw it, it made sense. Like nothing was, you know, counterintuitive. Pre-session is probably the one example you see in this class that is counterintuitive. So uh, being able to work through this, uh, it's the same type of ability that will help you do well in physics 4B, where in physics 4C, where a lot of things are unintuitive. <laughs>